Hi everybody, this is Lefty Dad bringing you another game from my 1948 season replay of Major League Baseball using PC Replay Baseball. And the game today is um, the Boston Braves who won the pennant in 1948 against the St. Louis Cardinals. And so far, Boston has been underperforming. Uh, I guess I could see what, what the uh, actual difference is. Currently, Boston is, they've played 94 games. They have a 532 win percentage. And in r real life, uh, they, I, that always is a little embarrassing to say in real life, uh, they had a 595 winning percentage. So they're a little off, but what's really odd is that sh the Chicago Cubs have a 604 winning percentage and they came in last place with a 416 winning percentage. And you can see here that they've split the first two games with the Cardinals. They got really destroyed in the first game, 13-2 and then came back and uh, I, that was Warren Spahn who had one of his better games of the year. He hasn't really been dominant but he's going at about 500 but I guess that's kind of what he did in real life too. So it's the final game of the doubleheader the first of August and Boston, the Boston Braves have, have a chance to kind of th their pretty comfortably in the first division of the National League, but they have a chance now to maybe get into second place and eventually work their way into first place. It really seems unlikely that the Cubs are going to drop all the way down to last place uh, because everything just has been going right for them. I guess I can look at the Cubs here. Um, and um, Pafco is hitting th 338 with 22 home runs, 88 RBIs. They've had incredible pitching, especially from Johnny Bear Claus Schmitz with 16 wins, 129 ERA and <coughs> .90 whip. Anyway, let's get to the ball game and uh, I'm gonna turn off the volume because I always kind of forget to do that. And if I don't do that, then this whole thing kind of gets totally messed up. Although they have great sound, and in fact I have a mod, uh, a sound mod that is even better than the one that comes with the game. It's <coughs> Everything about this game is easily moddable. And there are a lot of mods available, and all of the player images and the logos and the um, intro pictures, they all come automatically with the game. You don't have to hunt around for them, which is a phenomenal convenience and very... Uh, Everything about this game is great value for the money. So uh, I will be coaching the Boston Braves, and again, I've been trying to think, I thought that would uh, help elevate them in the first place, but again, I, I'm kind of worried that maybe it has done the opposite and I'm a terrible manager. You can see Stan Musial is leading the National League in this replay at 364. 26 home runs, and uh, Tommy Holmes has a 317 average. Jeff Heath has a has 20 home runs, and Howie Pollitt will be, I hope that's how you pronounce his name, I, <laughs> Pallet, Pallet, I'm going to call him Howie. Uh, and then Nels Potter, I hope that's how you pronounce his last name, Pote, uh, he came over in a trade and uh, he has been really great. He's only had four starts, so uh, but you can see 1.78, and he's nine and four. So let's go to uh, Braves Field, and uh, we, we can check on Potter here. Potter started with the Browns, then he went to the Athletics and now he's with Boston, so he's really traveled around, but 
uh, he is overperforming with his ERA anyways, about the same with his whip. And he's already exceeded the wins that he had for that season. So let's go uh, Irv Dusak. He's only hitting 199 leads off, and he strikes out. Here is Marty Marion, and he's going to ground out to Al Dark, shortstop. And now Stan Musful. All these hitters now are the ones that have been in practically every game. Uh, they've all been in about 90 to 95 games, and they're approaching 400 at-bats. So Musful has 382 at-bats, and he usually does something quite dramatic uh, when he... And it's going to be a home run, so they think. Yeah, it's a home run. So he does something dramatic. I'm kind of a fortune teller. That's his 27th home run. He's leading the National League in this replay. There is a possible walk, uh, and it is a genuine walk. And Potter has only given up, I guess this doesn't say, uh, that's his first home run out of 71 innings that he's given up all season. So thank you, Stan. Uh, now there is a single to left field. And... Whitey Karowski is up, and that's going to be a ground out. So one run for St. Louis on the solo homer by Stan the Man and Howie Pollitt. Howie Pollitt came to the league a few years ago, and uh, he is doing better than he did in real life. Although the one odd thing is that he won... 13 games. Even though he's doing better, he won 13 games. He's only won four and he's lost 11. So luck, apparently, or run support or something has not been on his side. There's a ground out to the third baseman for Tommy Holmes. The leadoff man, Al Dark, is up, who's slowly been raising his average up to where it ought to be, but he grounds out to the shortstop. And now Mike McCormick gets a triple. He's been a really good hitter, hasn't played a lot. Uh, and now Bob Elliott, who has been a very steady player too, but he's going to fly out to right field. So it's one to nothing. The Braves really need to win this game. There's a fly out to center for Nippy Jones. Bill Baker is up, and he's been hitting better than. Let's see what Baker's real batting at. Yeah, 294. I guess he's. <laughs> I guess he's a good hitter. Uh, Howie Pollard is up, two out and he's going to strike out. So we go to the bottom of the second. Boston really needs to win this. Frank McCormick has not been so great. Uh, and he hits a double. So maybe things are starting to turn around in these dog days. Clint Konatzer strikes out. Phil Massey. Normally a double play machine, but he's got a runner on second, and that would have been a double play. But he just moves the runner over to third with the ground ball to Dusak at second. And now in the number eight slot, slot Billy Sturgeon, who hardly ever plays, uh, only in his 13th game. But that's going to be a base hit to center. He ties the score up, and now we have two outs. And Nels Potter, the pitcher, is up, and he's hitting... 421, and he hit 370, so he's a really great hitter. Let's see what he can do. He hits it to the best outfielder, who's rated 5, the best you can be. Very unlikely that it will drop in, and it absolutely does not. So, uh, we're, we move to the top of the third. Potter is not going to be able to go this whole game. You can see here, in the he's only going to be able to fif, uh, face uh, 15 more hitters. Maybe he'll get an extension when he gets to that point. And Dusak hits a ground ball to Sturgeon, but he legs it out, just barely is safe at first. Now Marty Marion hits a slow grounder. And I def this this uh, decision about go for the batter, the lead runner this would be applicable more if there was a runner on third and you didn't want the runner to score, but with a runner on first and no outs, it's a no-brainer. You go for the lead runner. And we go against his speed, and he's safe. 
I don't. I think if I would have gone for the guy at first, it would have been based on his speed. So it's not an automatic out. Okay, not a good situation. Runners on first and second. Nobody out. Stan Musial is back up. He's going to hit to a double play, I think. Yeah, double play. Okay, so still a one-to-one -one score. Slaughter hitting 327. Really good hitter. And he flies out to right field. So we go to the bottom of the third. And Tommy Holmes is up. Grounded out to third last time up. And this is going to be... Uh, a rare play. So we'll see what this rare is. The Texas League pop fly to shallow left field. The shortstop races out there. If he can roll, I believe, a two or higher. Maybe it's a three or higher. Uh, it doesn't matter. It's a four. So he's out. He catches the ball on that Texas League pop fly to left field. So one out. Al Dark is up. He gets a hit. Line drive to right field. Maybe he can extend it if he can roll a five or six, but he can't. Okay, now Mike McCormick is up, and he's a great punt bunter. I think I'm going to have him bunt. And he's, he moves Dark over, gets a sacrifice bunt. Now Elliot, who has 51 RBIs so far in 89, uh, in 335 at-bats. Let's see what Bob Elliot can do. And he grounds out to the second baseman. So we go to the top of the fourth. Bob Ron Northey is up, and he's been really on a tear, hitting 383. But that's going to be a ground out to Sturgeon, the second baseman. Now Whitey is up. This is going to be a tough play. It's, McCormick is the least effective outfielder, so he's going to have to roll 41 or lower, and he does just barely. That is actually the next lowest step, because then you don't have a 47 or a 48, 49. So, uh, that was fortunate for Boston. Now, Nippy Jones is up. Nippy, wow, he hits a lot of ground balls that are turning into double plays. So that was a ground out. Okay, Frank McCormick is up against Howie Pollitt. There's a ground ball to Marion. Easy ground out. Konatzer. Konatzer, I'm pronouncing that correctly, I believe, is up, and he gets a base hit to center. He can maybe try to extend it for extra bases, and he probably will. Yeah, he does. Maybe he'll even go to third, try to run on Musewell's arm, which he probably can do, and he does. Wow, he turns that into a triple. Big play, one out, Massey at bat, hitting 254. And that is going to be a dribbler to the mound. And they're going to try to get Massey out. So I think they'll let the run score. They do get Massey out at first. But uh, that does allow uh, the runner to score. So the Braves have taken the lead. Sturgeon is up. He grounds out to the pitcher who flips it over to the first baseman. Top of the fifth. Bill Baker is up again. Struck out last time. This is a deep fly right to the wall in right field. Tommy Holmes is there to catch it. Howie Pollitt is up. And that's going to be a tough play for Alvin Dark. It's going to be close, but he gets him by a step. And Dusak is up. Dusak. It's a little dribbler to the mound, I think. We'll see here. Yeah, a little dribbler to the mound. He's got good speed. It's going to be tough to get him. Two out. They hurry the throw, and they just barely get him. Okay, now we go to the bottom of the fifth, and you can see over here, this five in the green circle means that... Oh, it's Tommy Holmes is batting. It doesn't really matter, but Potter is going to be able to go a few more innings. Tommy Holmes is up, and he hits a single to center on that lefty-lefty matchup. If he would have been a right-handed hitter, I think he would hit a double. <clears throat> okay, Al Dark is up, and I think we're going to bunt. Play a little small ball here. And he moves it down to second. Okay, it's Mike McCormick, who tripled. The last. I think he did that where he just kept running on Busevel, maybe. 
maybe that was another hitter. Okay, here's McCormick, and that is not, it's a line out to left. So we didn't get any insurance runs. Marion, the second slot hitter, is, hits a triple, wow. Hits a triple. That is Marion's second triple of the year. He only hit four. Okay, now Musil's up. It's going to be a difficult situation. And uh, this could be... Uh, Potter does not throw wild pitches. This is a possible... It's a pass ball possibility, but Massey is great. Only a six will be a pass ball. It's a four, so he stops. He's a wall. Musil, again, this is going to be a clutch hit. Wow. Batter double in the gap. And the score is tied. Stan is two for three. Here's Slaughter. He's going to strike out. That is Potter's fourth strikeout. And uh, one out. Northy is up. There's going to be a base hit to left. Musil will probably score. Nope, he's going to hold him up. Okay, Karow... Kara Karofsky is up, and it's, I, I don't know, maybe I should play him in, but we're the home team, so we'll, he doesn't really hit any double plays, so, but this is to the shortstop, and all they do is get the out at second. I maybe should have played him in. I think I blundered there. And now Potter's going to be able to go a little bit farther, so Nippy is up. Nippy hits a sharp ground ball to the first baseman. And we are trailing now at the bottom of the sixth. Bob Elliott is up. Bob is going to probably, yeah, that's a sharp ground ball off Nippy Jones's glove. Nippy usually plays second base, so he's playing a, a little different position. Okay, Frank McCormick is up. He's a great butter, so let's have him butt. We never seem to be able to score anybody when we get him down to second, and this could be an error on Karowski. It most likely will be an error. It is, so now we have runners on first and second, nobody out. And we're going to bunt again. Konatzer is going to try to move everybody along. And uh, he bunts it down the first baseline where Nippy Jones is playing in, and he pops out. Okay, now we've got Massey, who's a double play machine. Will... Uh, we're going to let him hit. We're behind. We can't waste any more outs, but it's a double play. Oh, man. See, I think I am sabotaging this Braves team because my decisions are always kind of catastrophic. Okay, Bill Bailey is up, and he grounds out to dark. Pollock is up, and he strikes out. <coughs> and now... Dusak is up, and he's going to hit a short fly to center field. Three up, three down. Sturgeon is at bat. He's going to hit a double. Oh, it's a single. Okay, well, now we're going to set him to go for it, to run as fast as possible. And uh, Potter is really a great hitter, but he hits a lot of double plays, so we're going to try. I'd like to keep him in the game, because Relief pitching in this league is not so great. Okay, here's a possible, oh my god, pop out double play. He's most likely going to be out. Oh, no, he's not. Well, no, he is. I guess I read that the opposite. Uh, man, talk about catastrophes. Okay, all because of my decision making. There's a walk. Now let's see if Eldar, two out. Don't have to worry about the double play. And that's going to be just a sharp ground ball to Marty Marion. It's looking a little bleak. I should have maybe pinched hit for Potter. I should have maybe not tried to sacrifice, but all this looking in the rearview mirror and double guessing. Okay, Potter faces Marion, who is one for three. He had a triple the last time up. This could be an error for Dark. He's kind of an average. Oh, it's just a 44 above 41. There is an error. That's the first error for Boston now. Musil is up. He's two for three with a double and a home run. And Musil
useful. Oh, he's going to hit a double. Wow, that was a bad pitch by Potter. And they're maybe going to send him in. And he scores all the way from first on that double. Slaughter is going to hit a ground ball to Dark, but that does not move, but he's all over. Now here's Northy. Northy is going to get a single to center. Here comes Musable. He's going to try to score, and he, he definitely will. There may even be an error on Conan, sir. There probably will be in that. He fumbles. He made a throwing error. Went home. Okay, uh, Karaski. There could be an error on Sturgeon. Uh, I can't remember. Oh, he's, he makes a lot of errors. There is the third error of the game. And uh, Nippy is up. Nippy gets a great pitch. It's a double. It's a disaster for the Boston Braves. They're going to let Karowski come in. They're going to let. They're going to try to send Jones the third on the throw to the home plate. Can they cut it off? No, they can't. Yeah, they do. They, he doesn't. He doesn't uh, test them. Okay. Let's see. We've got McCormick coming up, third hitter. So uh, and we've got. I guess we'll bring in eighth inning. We'll bring in uh, White. White has, well, he's he's been overused. He's pitched 30 innings. He only pitched 23 in, in the real season. So we'll go with Hogue. And uh, Bill Baker is going to get a single. And it's off the pitcher's glove. Hogue is a really great fielder. So there's no error, but there's only one out. Pollard is up. Pollard, I think he's going to, you know, he hits into a double play. So we are in the bottom of the eighth, trailing five to two, looking very bad. And there's a ground out four to three. McCormick grounds out. Elliott's up. He singled last time up. He's one for three. There's a fly out center, and now Frank McCormick is up. He's one for two. Hit a double the last time up, and it's going to be a ground out to Marion. So not exactly a great ball game. A lot of the problems have been caused by my decisions. Certainly not an exciting game, really. Uh, there's a leaping catch by the shortstop. Marion is up. He's going to pop a short fly to center. And Stan Musil gets one more at bat. And he gets thrown out by Sturgeon. Okay, now we are in the bottom <coughs> of the order, bottom of the ninth. Uh, Konatzer hit 277. He's currently hitting 309 in this replay, so we'll let him bat. There he's going to get a hit and line drive to center field. And he's going to try to get extra bases. He gets a double. Maybe he'll get to third on Musil's arm. And he does. Okay, I'm going to have to switch this now to playing it safe. Because with a five-run deficit, I don't want... This run is not going to matter. So, Massey is up. He's a good hitter. And he pops out the second base. Sturgeon is not a good hitter. So, we're going to let Heath... Bad, even though it's a lefty lefty matchup and he pops out to the second baseman okay now we're down to our last out we're gonna let Russell pitch it Jim Russell who's underperforming hitting 230 he should be hitting 264 so he flies out to center field so that's the end of the game if you like this uh, video please give me a like please subscribe because I'm on, I'm on my uh, quest to get 100 subscriptions. But it's bad news for Boston. And uh, this is Lefty Dad thanking you very much for watching this game.